Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and this is how to shoot your flintlock muzzleloader in 10 or so minutes. To get started here, I wanna say that this is one way to shoot your flintlock muzzleloader, and this is not the only way to do it. There's gonna be a lot of different people out there with different opinions. This is just one data point for you to reference as you get on with and continue your muzzleloading journey. I encourage you to reach out and chat with other muzzleloading enthusiasts, both in person and online, to learn more. The very first thing we wanna do when we bring out a muzzleloader, be it ours or somebody else's, we wanna first make sure that this is not loaded because we don't have a simple chamber like on a modern firearm to open, to check and make sure this isn't loaded. We need to go through a couple extra steps here, but they're really quick and they make sure that you're muzzleloading safely. The first and probably the most popular way to check and see if your muzzleloader is loaded is to pull out your ramrod here and we'll just drop it down the board. And I can hear that I don't know if you can there at home, but there's just a very metallic sound there. And that's the metallic sound of the end of my ramrod bouncing against the breech face of my rifle. Now, that is not confirmation though. What we can do now is we'll bring our rifle up. We're pointing this in a safe direction, just as you should at home. We'll lay it here on the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the ramrod here at the end of the muzzle and I'm holding it exactly where it runs up at, against the muzzle here to kind of mark a line with my finger here where the ramrod is at the end of the muzzle. And then I'm gonna remove the ramrod. And with my thumb still firmly in that position, I'm gonna put the, my thumb on the end of the muzzle. We can then grip the ramrod back here at our lock and I can see and confirm visually that the tip of my ramrod is going at or beyond the touch hole of my rifle, meaning that my ramrod is able to clear past the touch hole, meaning the touch hole is not obstructed by a load, that our chamber is empty. So when a muzzleloader is stored or put away, typically you'll find it is stored with oil to prevent any rusting in the bore, at least that's how I do it. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a fresh dry cleaning patch with my loading rod here, and I want to run it down the bore, bring it straight back up, flip the patch over, bring it up. You see I have just a little bit of residue in there from here when I've been shooting, but it's uh, I've got soaked up oil and things. There's some dirt off of my fingers. We'll use this side. It looks a little bit better, uh, but there's no gooey oil or anything in here. I have two ramrods here. The first is a traditional hickory ramrod here with a metal tip at the end. This metal tip is threaded to accommodate a ramrod jag. This is a metal loading rod. This is what you'll see a lot in muzzle loading competition. It is a stainless steel rod. It is also threaded at the base to accommodate a cleaning jag. It has a turned ball end at the top and features this dowel or, or polymer bushing here to protect the muzzle of my bore. Depending on what you're doing with muzzle loading, you can use these pretty much interchangeably. You're gonna see different uses for these in this video. Commonly, you'll see people using the metal rod in competition and for cleaning, and the wooden hickory rod for loading in a traditional style match. If you're wanting to come out and shoot a freshly cleaned or oiled barrel, you're gonna find that your patch comes up very damp and sticky from that oil. It's not going to allow the black powder to ignite, and we don't want that. So you wanna make sure that your bore is dry and cleared out in addition to being unloaded. To load our flintlock muzzleloader, we're gonna use the old adage, powder patch then ball, or it won't go off at all. So even though it seems simple, we wanna make sure that we're doing that in order so we don't have to pull any dry balls, which is a ball loaded without powder. So we're gonna start with our black powder. I'm loading from the horn here. This is uh, my Tim Crosby powder horn. It's set up and kind of runs with my kit and my bag and things for this rifle. It is right now filled with 3F black powder. You know, there's gonna be a lot of different discussions out there about black powder and its granulation, but the rule of thumb generally is if you're less than 50 caliber, you wanna use 3F. If you're more, or if you're 50 caliber and higher, you wanna use 2F. Now, you can use those powders back and forth pretty interchangeably as long as you're loading a safe amount of powder. I'm going to remove the plug from my horn and I'm going to tip it upside down to get the powder into the spout. I have my river cane powder measure here. This is a pre-measured charge of 55 grains and that's the most efficient load for this rifle. Oh, a little too much. I'm going to plug my horn and place it safely over here. From here, I'm going to tilt my muzzle forward, my gun back, 
so that I can get to the muzzle and I'm gonna pour my powder charge down the barrel. You can give it a couple taps there to make sure that all of your powder is down the barrel. And then we're ready to move on to the next step. Powder, patch, and ball, or it won't go off at all. So next we wanna get our patch. I'm using a pillow ticking patch. It's about 15 thousandths, and it's lubed with some Frontiers Bear Grease patch lube and, and rust preventative. I have some other videos talking about patch lube that you can check out. And I'm using a 395 cast lead round ball here. So the caliber of my rifle is a 40 caliber. And so I'm using a 395 ball. It's a step below that 40 caliber diameter. And the patch itself is going to engage and expand in that rifling to help this be a tighter, more precise load. Place the patch on the top of my muzzle here. I place the ball on top, trying to center the patch on the muzzle uh, so I have a consistent ring around the edge. With my ball in place, I just thumb it, kind of stick it into the muzzle so that it's not rolling or falling off. From there, I take my short starter. I'm going to use the little peg end here to make this initial start. I'm placing that short starter on top of the ball just like this, tapping it until the antler short starter hits the end of the muzzle. And I turn around, use this hickory ramrod section here. So now the rifle is short started. We don't want to fire in this position because it can cause damage to the bore or the barrel, depending on what you're shooting. We always want to make sure that after we short start the load, that we finish loading the load so we don't have any issues. So I'm going to take my hickory ramrod here, place it in the end of the muzzle, and I'm going to grab about 10 inches or so in front of the muzzle, you can kind of see there, and I'm gonna gently push down. And I'm gonna keep moving my hand up and down the ramrod, pressing the load down to the powder. Now you're gonna feel this bottom out. You can hit it a couple times to verify that will and can deform your ball, can lead to decreased accuracy, but that's not necessarily something you need to worry about all the time. On my ramrod here, I have two marks, and these indicate to me where my charge is loaded. So jumping back to the beginning there, we dropped the ramrod down to verify that it wasn't loaded. Now my ramrod does not go in that far, and it goes in enough to match to my first loaded line. So now my ramrod has an indicator to know and to show when my rifle is loaded. Going back there to the beginning, you remember that bounce? We have a much different bounce now. We have more of a subdued, uh, a much of a lower tone, and the ramrod is not bouncing as much. So there we can pull our ramrod out, place it securely back into the thimbles. And now this rifle is considered loaded. We always want to treat our muzzle loaders as if they are loaded and point the muzzles in a safe direction. But now this rifle is loaded. It is not primed, but we want to still treat it with that same respect and keep the muzzle in a safe direction. At this point, I like to put in my hearing protection. Coming forward here about a foot away from our breech or so, we have our rear sight. And then at the muzzle end of the rifle, we have our front sight. So we have a front blade and a rear notch sight system, just like you'd see on a lot of modern pistols as they come from the manufacturer. You just have that blade and notch sight system. And this functions all the same as the blade and notch sight system that you have on a modern rifle does. You want to line up the top of your front sight with the top of your rear sight. So you have a nice straight level line there on your target. So at this point, I'm going to pull the cock back to a position called half cock. Now this is kind of our safety position. If the lock is on half cock, it cannot and should not go off. We're gonna place the lock in half cock here with our frizzen open. Take a little bit of our priming powder. Dab it in the pan. Now depending on the kind of lock that you have and the kind of rifle that you have, you're gonna use different amounts of priming powder, but you wanna use an amount that is appropriate for your rifle. From here, we're going to close the frizzen, and we're ready to go. I'm in a safe position here, pointing my muzzle downrange. I'm going to pull my cock back to full cock, and now we're off safety. We're ready to go. When I pull the trigger, it will ignite and shoot. There we go.
That's as easy as that. If you'd like to learn more about muzzle loading and about traditional muzzle loading, especially here with some of the traditional accoutrements that go along with it, I encourage you to check out some of the other YouTube channels that I've linked in the description below. You can also visit ilovemuzzleloading.com for a full beginner's outline of how to get into muzzle loading and how to learn kind of along with me. You know, I'm not an expert. I, I just want to present a lot of this stuff here uh, in, a, in a manner that I find enjoyable and I, I think that you can learn from a little bit along the way. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.